some of the uh, the older numbers, and um, they're calling it a, a sort of a small business boom, or at least a small business application boom. Um, I wonder uh, if if there's going to be a third year at, at at five million. I mean, if you highlight those numbers, you sort of have got to hope that there's going to be a third year in a row of that, uh, and 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 more to the point, maybe a. Uh, to, to be a good year, they're talking about a calendar year. That makes it tougher because you know the SBA, uh, you know, has a fiscal year, but but they're talking about two calendar years, um, five million or more in applications. Lance, what do you think? I wouldn't see any reason for applications to not be at a similar level this year. Uh, you know, when I worked at SBA, it was during right uh, toward the tail end of the Great. You know, we've got some some difficult economic headwinds occurring and uh, you know small businesses typically what happens is your commercial lenders your commercial lending institutions tighten up quite a bit and john i, I think we're noticing that right now aren't we uh and, and when 2024 john i i've been tracking you and i haven't talked about this so i'm sorry if i'm um, blindsiding you with <laughs> <laughs> but I like doing that anyway. I, I've been following a lot of states are coming up with their own programs. California just announced $1 billion in funding for small business. Do you follow what the states are doing? You know, I don't follow it. I probably should, but it's it, it, it's tough. And I don't, I'd be interested um, uh, to find a bank that um, really seizes on these programs and, and makes it a, a um, makes it a priority, not because they don't think there are any, but, but just because, number one, they're just not as big as SBA. I mean, one billion compared to 35 billion is, uh, it, it speaks for itself. And number two, um, SBA is gonna be here year after year after year after year. Um, we don't know um, two years from now, three years from now, if California is going to, um, you know, continue or, or any other state. So it is, it, it, yeah. I, I, I should, but I don't. It's interesting. I will, I will tell you what, and Pacific Premier, Premier Bank here in Southern California, they, um, they're one of the largest lenders to the trucking industry. California's mm -hmm. enacted some climate change changes for the engines on these big diesel semi trucks, and they have a guarantee program, and the bank has done very well in lending money to these owner operators to upgrade their engines and do whatever they have to do. So there are, um, and it's a, it's a SBA lookalike, it's a guarantee, and um, they have a lot of special pro, uh, programs in there. So that's fascinating. So, so I'm seeing a lot, of, I, the reason I bring it up is SBA is there, but there's also a lot of other programs, programs that, are, uh, that are sprouting up as well. Um, very good. Hey, let's go to the polls, Joseph. Number one, small business owners are most concerned with Lance, you got a 50-50 shot. Well, I'm going with uh, reducing expenses. John, I'm going to let you weigh in here before we show the numbers. Oh, way to go, Joseph. <laughs> John, how about reducing expenses? <laughs> yes. Well, part of it, the they're at, they're always concerned with revenue growth. Of course. But, you know, in a time when uh, interest rates have increased, most small ba businesses or debt service requirements are higher. Uh, you know, they have to find a place to cut back uh, to be able to meet those debt service requirements. So they're going to look closely at things, you know, what I call discretionary it might be travel as an example. Or, in a lot of circumstances, small business owners, you know, there are things that get expense that are related to their personal life to some extent, and they're probably going to reduce that. I remember when I was a small business owner, Bob and, and John, uh, going through a recessionary period. And when I went into it, I had a big, beautiful, nice delivery truck, brand spanking new. And, <laughs> And when things slowed down and it got tight, I had to trade that in. I don't know if you guys remember a S10 Chevrolet pickup, the little small S10. Uh, I had to get rid of the big fancy four wheel drive with an extended cab and trade it for a small S10 for deliveries because, uh, uh, and so I mean, figuring out ways to reduce expenses to keep them operating uh, in a positive 
cash flow mode is is very concerning for a lot of small business owners. That, that's a nice segue. Uh, Delaney wrote an article, and I hadn't heard about this, John, is that actually, um, Delaney, are you on? What's Hello. Hi, Delaney, welcome. What is your source of this article? Uh, briefly describe what you're writing about and what you're finding in terms of employees. Joseph, you're going um, to chart. So this is from biz to credit and speaking about reducing um, expenditures, the monthly average expenditure for small businesses dropped in 2022, and they also were spending about 12% less on each of those transactions. And go, go to the next uh, slide, Joseph. Um, one more. Do we have the one on the employees? That's what I'm looking for, Joseph. No, just the two. No, just that. Um, and what's going on with employees, Delaney? I'll let you, I thought we had that in there. Why, why don't you summarize what the chart is? Bob, I will be honest, you're catching me off guard as well. <laughs> well I got this cute chart. Well, okay, this is what it says. It says, share of small business owners who said it got easier versus more difficult to find workers. And it's gotten easier. Uh -oh. uh, in December of 2020, which I was shocked. There we go. That's what I want to see. Uh, Lance, John, have you guys heard about that? I had not heard, Bob. I, had, I I was still under the impression it was difficult to find good qualified employees. So it looks like it's getting a little easier to hire people. Now, it's a small segment, but that's fine. I mean, small segments tend to, um, in terms of survey, they can be statistical valid. But it's a 25% said it's more easier to, to find uh, employees. And I think that also goes in with the expense reduction. They're focusing on employees or focusing on expenses. And um, that, that's the first I've heard about that. John, have you heard anything around that? I haven't. And I can so only say anecdotally, I mean, everyone probably looks around as they're going about their daily business. And as I look around, I, I continue to see help wanted everywhere. That's true. That's true. Everyone. And, and, and so. it says it's easier. It doesn't say they've solved the problem. It's easier. So yeah. we'll, we'll do that. But that's, that, I thought that was interesting. Um, and 56% said hiring challenges made it difficult to operate at full capacity. So they're still over that. You're right on that. And we all experience that. We go out to a restaurant and service is slow. 81% um, reported raising wages in response to labor challenges. And obviously, that's, a, that's an issue that uh, they're they're focusing upon um all right that was that was a messy segue i thought i had well, it all uh, you know one thing i wonder it's getting easier to find employees but i wonder as things slow down a little bit <laughs> are we going to see that even get more more substantial the, everybody's operating lean and mean right now, which is a good thing for small businesses because I think we're going to go through an economic slowdown. So they don't want to be overstaffed right now. But it is good news to hear that they're finding it easier to find employees. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk, I'm going to change subjects, Lance. I want to talk about this. Just to bring up poll question number two Can you rewrite a prime plus seven SBA 70 variable rate loan? and turn it over to a fixed rate loan. And this is a... Oh, don't I'm give away the answer, Lance. I'm not gonna run it, Bob. But. All, right. <laughs> All right, this came it, up last it, it week, depends. Lance. Go ahead, tell us about this. Well, it depends on if you sell your loans on the secondary market. If you've got a loan sold on the secondary market, um, you know, there's nothing that says you couldn't rewrite the loan from a, a you know, floating rate loan to a fixed rate, but it would require the investor's approval. And the investor bought the loan based on a prime rate plus a spread uh, for a certain term. So typically on a loan sold in the secondary market, the answer to this is, is a no, unless the invest, investor approves. Now, on a loan that you have on your in your portfolio, on your balance sheet, uh, you can go back and adjust the interest rate from a variable rate to a fixed rate uh, if the financial, the borrower and the financial institution are in agreement on that. So it can be. But Lance, if the investor balks, you have the right to repurchase the loan from the investor, correct? 
the okay if you've got a loan sold in the secondary market and you present it to the investor to switch from variable to fix and the investor declines it you have the option to a buy it back from the investor or you also could potentially request an emergency repurchase by SBA of the guaranteed portion of that loan from the investor uh, if you go in your SOP 5072 and do a control F and type in emergency repurchase, uh, if a servicing action is necessary uh, for the small business to survive, uh, you could in fact request a, an emergency repurchase on behalf of SBA. And there's some information you have to gather for that. And SBA does require, you know, if you go to them and say, we need an emergency repurchase because we want to go to a fixed rate and the investor decline, uh, you do have to go ahead and follow through with that and switch it to a fixed rate if SBA does the emergency repurchase. Yeah, but you have the, you have the ability to do that. I mean, that's, or uh, you, can, you can buy it back yourself and, and just make the change. So, yeah, and the banker we were talking to, they, they want to buy them back and they want to help the bar, a couple of borrowers out, and they're just going to hold it in portfolio. It's a nice earning asset for them. So, that's that's well. And Bob, and I'll say this there is certainly good non interest income earned by selling on the secondary market. But one bank that I work built an SBA lending program, uh, the, the CEO was real bag big, not bag big, on a return on equity model. And we had to plug every loan into a return on equity model. Well, the return on equity on a loan sold in the secondary market is really exceptional in year one and year two. But if you look at the long term, the return on equity by keeping it in your portfolio is substantially higher. Very good. John, what are you working on? Um, is SBA quiet these days? I know we're waiting for a bunch of stuff. Uh, anything else um, with the... Um, transition to the house anything uh, anything on the horizon that uh, we should be aware of uh, for me I'm, I'm waiting to see what they do uh involving the rule on the moratorium i, I think that's a that, that's a really big um issue and it's, it's totally in their hands um and then so it's just waiting every day waiting to see um uh checking the federal register and other uh sources to see if uh, the rules come out. I haven't checked today, so maybe it has. So I should have done that before coming on. No, it, it hasn't come out. I get an automatic email on that. And... Yeah, yeah. And 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 this, I, I would like to follow up um, uh, with SBA and uh, uh, maybe uh, dig deeper into the, uh, you know, the statement about the 10.5 million in applications and you know, maybe pose the question to them, um, you know, as they consider major changes to the SB model, when things are, uh, you know, proceeding at this rate, at this pace, why, why mess with success? I mean, can, and, uh, they, they seem on, on one hand to, to like the way things are, to, to tout uh, uh, the numbers, and, and they should be touted. I'm not, I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong, but, you know, they have some pretty big changes in mind, and I wonder, um, you know, I'd like to hear oh, from them. Yeah. I know that that yeah, we're all waiting for that other sheet to drop for them to issue those regulations. Uh, last yeah. thing I want to talk about is stress tests. Joseph, bring up poll question number three. Do you include a stress test interest rate analysis in your cash flow? Lance, what do you recommend? Uh, I strongly recommend having a stress test. I think most financial institutions do include oh, stress analysis. Eighty-seven oh, percent. Yeah. There we go. It, uh, you know, there was a day for so many years, SBA loans basically were fixed rate loans, even if you had them prime plus two and three quarters, because prime didn't change. Well, as we've witnessed in the last 12 months, prime can change quite a bit. And uh, so stress testing is more important today than it's been in the last 10 or 15 years. What would you recommend as a spread to stress test these loans? Well, uh, if you asked me that question at the beginning of 2022, guys, I, I would have failed miserably because I would have never predicted the, the amount you would. Normally, I would say stress testing at one or two, typically 2%. Two points. Stress it at uh, a point higher or 1% higher, 2% higher, 
course, uh, in 2022, that would have, would not have quite worked. But uh, stress testing is important. I think the pace of interest rate changes, and John, tell me if I'm wrong, I think it's going to slow down dramatically in 2020. I think you're right. And um, as I've been listening to these earnings reports by banks, I hear more and more the talk about the potential for uh, cuts at, towards the end of this year, you know, yeah. like a fourth quarter. Oh, really? So um, in that model, if, if, if the, you know, the, you know, the businesses can get through these next six months, six or seven months, there may be some relief on the horizon um, in, in the form of, of some rate cuts. But that, that's all I can say. No one will say, venture to predict um, how, how much the rates will, will go back. Um, um, you know, will there be three or four 75 point reductions? Probably not. Um, I, I would say not. I think it will be much more modest, but at least um, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely in line with Lance. Um, the, the pace of increase will slow, and, and hopefully by the end of the year, um, uh, actually reverse a little. Very good. Okay. Um, the reason why I bring this up is sort of a teaser for our webinar on Wednesday. What are we talking about, Lance? Well, we're going to talk about how to properly calculate cash flow and debt coverage analysis uh, according to SBA's SOP. Uh, and again, Bob, you know, the stress test question is an incredible question because most lending institutions have always had stress testing as part of their underwriting, but you could have been in SBA lending for eight or nine years, Bob, and never seen an interest rate change. I mean, and suddenly we've had multiple changes in a 12 month period. So underwriting <clears throat> the cash flow on SBA loans more important than ever uh, and, and understanding proper calculation of a debt coverage ratio is also more important than this ever. And we got, we got it 60 seconds, 30 seconds real quick. And Lance, next week, uh, a new webinar. What's your thinking on this and why are we doing this one at this We're point? We're gonna talk about many of the things that are involved in SBA reviews. Uh, we're gonna cover Bob, an actual SBA list that they use uh, when they <clears throat> do review a loan portfolio. Uh, we'll talk about the Paris score and how it impacts your bank. So uh, if you're a PLP lender, I highly recommend you sign up and be a part of that webinar. Yeah, because SBA now has the ability to pull those licenses very quickly. Hey, John, thank you so much for uh, giving your time and, um, and uh, supporting us. We appreciate that. Lance, good to see you. Delaney, shout out to you. Thank you all for joining us today for Coleman Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us today for today's episode. If you like today's content, hit that subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and click that bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Thank you again for joining us today and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Catch you next time.